Welcome back. Well, navigating the healthcare system in Canada can be scary for some, but for people of color, it's terrifying. And so our next guest had just recently published a study that paints a grim picture of the healthcare system as it pertains to Black healthcare professionals. Uh, she is the host of the Race Health Happiness podcast, Dr. Anyi Norum. And doctor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Dr. Norum, I think uh, we've talked about it a lot on this show, but you've seen this pandemic hitting different um, communities differently, depending on where they fall on the sort of the, the socioeconomic uh, stratus fear, if you can, if we can go there. And I want to know from your perspective as a doctor, what is this um, pandemic look like for marginalized communities and those who are already vulnerable? For the pandemic, I can say, you know, myself as a physician, and I'm also the president of the Black Physicians Association of Ontario, what we've seen is what society has really come to understand that uh, COVID-19 certainly was not a great equalizer. Um, and in the Black community, we knew that that would not be the case. Um, but certainly in Toronto, where there is uh, race-based data and other demographic data, we see that the, um, the pandemic has disproportionately affected people of lower income, as you mentioned, um, and racialized groups, such that Black and other people of colour um, are 83, at least this summer, were 83% of the COVID-19 cases in the city of Toronto. Um, and so we have to really ask ourselves questions as a society where we've seen that um, different groups that experienced um, different forms of systemic discrimination, we see them actually being presented as the groups that are most vulnerable to COVID-19. Now, doctor, I want to move on to the study that was recently published by yourself and your peers. It focused on the experience of medicine by physicians. What inspired you to conduct that study? What inspired it, uh, it was um, a learner, a, a medical resident, a physician in training called Joseph Mpalirwa um, at the University of Toronto. And he wanted to find a way to highlight the anti-Black racism that exists in medicine. And because it was his uh, project, we decided to match it with, um, in collaboration with the Black Physicians Association of Ontario. And we thought a, a, um, a practical way to start would be to raise uh, the issue of anti-Black racism in medicine, speaking about what's called the lateral violence. So lateral violence is what happens between colleagues. And so we thought it was important to talk about um, these issues of anti-Black racism in the way that physicians are treated. We usually do not talk about these things as healthcare providers. We're very focused on the communities that we are serving and to be uh, good providers. But we've come to the realization that really, you know, um, one of my colleagues, Newman Ashraf, says, you know, the culture that you tolerate, and thinking about the work culture, the culture that you tolerate is the culture you promote. And so where uh, racism mm. is existing in the lateral context, then imagine what's happening in the vertical context, what happens when a vulnerable racialized person comes into healthcare. And so, you know, we've seen that as demonstrated with the treatment of Joyce Eshaquan, right? With, you know, an Indigenous woman who was treated uh, with, with, with just extremely poorly, with no compassion um, in a healthcare setting. I want to talk about some statistics that, um, you know, we're going to read that have come out of the United States that show that African-American women, um, they are, that who are pregnant, they are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications than uh, as compared to white women. And we also know that Black babies are more likely to survive birth if they are cared for by Black doctors. This is going to be groundbreaking information for a lot of people to hear for the first time. Can you explain the discrepancy in those uh, stark numbers? Yes. So, um, first of all, that's in the United States. But we know here in Canada that disparities do exist. So we do have small studies showing that, um, you know, uh, black women, when they have um, children in Canada, are more likely to be preterm or to be low birth weight. So there are disparities. But these studies that show uh, how anti-black racism plays out in medicine um, also do apply here, I would say, um, based on experience. So 
Um, what, so first of all, what are these stereotypes that end up playing out as the implicit or explicit biases, these things that we see in medicine? And so when it comes to specifically anti-Black racism, we you know, have to think about our own history in Canada, that we had slavery, and the stereotypes about Black people are things like being less intelligent, having a lower pain threshold, not to be trusted. So when a patient comes in, those implicit biases come out. So you see that um, there in the provider who is not black, particularly in the states it was white providers, um, making assumptions about patients or provide or there are studies where they you know uh, don't provide the same um, amount of pain medication that they would provide uh, to a white patient. The second thing that you see come out in these studies with regards to anti-black racism is a, a lower empathy. Um, from non-black providers. And so there are studies showing that, you know, where um, you have a black patient or a white patient and it's a white provider, the white provider um, is more likely to kind of hold the hand of the white patient, come closer to the, the bedside, write more detailed notes. Um, and then you don't, with a black uh, provider, you don't see those types of biases. You see the full note, the hand holding, the compassion and the empathy. And then the third thing is cultural. And that certainly plays out here in Canada, and it's really having, uh, you know, that lack of cultural understanding of really um, understanding that people have different values and beliefs, and that they are not inferior to Western values or beliefs, but simply different. And so that affects the therapeutic relationship as well. And I want to emphasize that although we do need more Black uh, physicians and more Black people in healthcare and in leadership, uh, the moral of the story is not that every Black patient needs a Black doctor. The moral of the story is that actually every black patient, every patient, sorry, every patient should be able to come into a healthcare setting. And that provider, regardless of their own background, should be able to see color. So not be colorblind, see color, see uh, gender, see other uh, social factors that of the person's social context and take that in and provide compassion and empathy and quality care to that person. So what needs to change in a fundamental way to tackle the anti-Black racism, um, anti-Indigenous racism in healthcare, doctor? Well, a few things need to happen. We need to really um, acknowledge that racism exists in medicine, systemic racism and interpersonal racism. We need to increase representation of underrepresented groups. I'm very proud to um, you know, say that I, I work at the University of Toronto, where we have gone from having one Black medical student uh, four years ago, Chika Ariwa, to now 26 Black medical students in the incoming class. And, you know, for the Black Physicians Association of Ontario, we've seen the numbers increase actually across the province and across the country. And that has happened because of great uh, leadership. Um, so, um, you know, great leaders, you know, the, the seeds were planted even 20 years ago, great leaders like Dr. Miriam Rossi, uh, who's now passed, but really saying we need to have an equity lens. And then more recently, um, you know, she had that leadership, but then the culture has changed such that from the dean to the medical students, regardless of their background, of diverse backgrounds, saying we need to change this. And so the structure and the system has changed at the University of Toronto so that there is more mentorship, there is more uh, transparency with regards to um, entering medicine, and we've seen an increase in diversity overall. So we need to see that across the country, but we also need, um, you know, our leaders, regardless of their background, to have decolonization training, to have um, uh, anti-racism training, and to really stand up for issues uh, of social justice and be committed to this type of change for all groups that have been kind of pushed to the margins of society. We really need to come in and rethink uh, what um, medicine needs to look like, what healthcare can look like, so that every person who comes in can have fair and good quality care. Absolutely. Dr. Norm, we want to thank you so much for stopping by and thank you for all of the hard work that you do in our communities. Thank you. I'm part of a great team. We'll be back after this.